Hey everybody, welcome to Cats Creations Live on a Friday night. Sorry we're just a touch late. Uh, we had a software update we had to install and it took 10 minutes for um, the software to update. So we're live now. Um, thank you guys for joining us on a Friday night. Today I'm going to teach you guys how to do a really simple patriotic centerpiece. These are perfect for those of you that are doing craft fairs that are um, making these for your office or even for your own holiday tables as we slowly start to get back to normal, um, whatever normal is these days. So um, because we're in the private group, let me go through some housekeeping issues. One, no, public. Did I say private? Yeah. <laughs> oh, since we're in the public group, housekeeping issues. One, um, if you're new, make sure you let us know. A lot of people make connections during Facebook Lives to other creatives in their hometown, sometimes as close as their neighborhood, without realizing exactly how close they are. So if you're new, let us know you're new, first time joining, um, and let us know where you're from so that you can make connections here with other people that are joining. Also, since it's public, you can feel free to share. Yes, I'm using the S word. I don't know if some people are aware, but in Facebook's terms and conditions, you can use the word share on your live video feeds, despite what anyone tells you. So if you actually take the time to read the terms and conditions, you can use it for a Facebook Live like this, where if you want to go back and refer to this video later, you can share it and put it on your page, and then that way it's easier for you to find. Um, what else? Uh, YouTube. YouTube people. So if you're watching this on YouTube, because I always have to do this, because YouTube people think it's live too. Um, we try to get it to you as soon as possible, but this is Friday. Wow, May 29th. Almost, yeah, almost in June. Almost the end of May. It's hard to believe that an entire, almost half of 2020 is already gone. Let's hope that season two is better than season one was. Right. Um, so, if you're catching this on YouTube, it is a replay from a Facebook Live from earlier. So, YouTubers, if you want to watch and participate in the live, join me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cats Creation 777 on Friday nights at 5 Pacific, 7 Central, and 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Okay. So, do we have people joining? With that said, we got Audrey. Audrey. Hi, Audrey. Audrey. Libby. Uh, Teresa, Karen, Lynn, Sandy, Susan, Stella, Ronnie, Barbara, Peggy, Melanie, uh, Christina, Mindy, Wilhelmine, Sharon, uh, Amanda. Says I watched all your videos on replay, but this is the first time I've caught you live. Welcome, thanks Welcome, for joining. Amanda. I'm from Mich Mishawaga, Indiana. Nice. And then Jennifer, Carol, Melanie, Stormy, Patty, Denise. This keeps going on and on. Okay. Yoli, Jane, Gail, Grace, and Susan. Well, thank you guys for taking the time to join me. This is going to be a super simple project, and you can do it with anything. Matter of fact, if you go to Dollar Tree or your dollar stores, you can generally find something that you can utilize as a container to do your centerpiece with. So I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. Um, these I picked up when I went to Shinoda, which is an online wholesaler that you can access if you have a wholesale license, business license, tax ID number, um, then you can order from them. But a lot of times the things that I show you here that we get from Shinoda walking in in person, they don't necessarily have available. So these are five inch tall by five inch diameter, um, little metal galvanized pails or buckets. And they have the um, print this one says America the Beautiful, and then this one says Let Freedom Ring. So these are popular with the folks that like the red trucks, um, and they're both different. But I'm gonna show you how to do a really super simple centerpiece. Um, and you can use two different types of fillers for you to go ahead and set your base. What I prefer to do is gaps and cracks. You got this at Lowe's, right? Yeah. How much was it, do you remember? Five, six dollars. Okay. They also sell it at Walmart too. So, um, and Home Depot. Yeah. yeah, Home Depot, whatever. It's the things that people would use to go ahead and seal gaps and cracks in their windows and doors to kind of prevent the, the energy from escaping. <clears throat> yeah. So, what you can do is you fill it up, 
It comes out like a spray foam. It almost looks like pancake batter okay. in a foam. Yep. You fill it up. You have to let it sit for 24 hours and then it will expand. So you want to make sure you don't fill it to the height that you want it. Yeah. I would stop about, what, half. three quarters of the way? Half. Half? Yeah. And um, then see where it stops. So did you stop it at half last night? He no, came last in time I went me. to three quarter. Okay, yeah, yeah. He came in and told me this morning. He filled it up last night, um, three quarters of the way full. Yeah. And then this morning, it was like a nice little dome, which was way too big. I needed it below the, yeah. the lip level. Yep. So half let it go and then go back and check on it within 24 hours and then it kind of makes for a surface that you can kind of poke all of your florals into because i'm not going to use a pick machine most of the time folks can't um that might be a long-term resupply that you save up for because they generally start at about 150 dollars up plus you have to buy the metal picks um, and you're only going to use them for things like doing florals or poking them sometimes in the grapevine, but I've shown you that you can do it without. So we're going to do it without. So gaps and cracks, um, we'll fill it and it's super light, doesn't make it heavy. Um, but you do want some stability because if you have these out on the back patio and maybe the wind starts to get a little, you know, gusting, you don't want your little floral bouquet to, to tip over or to take a... Uh, flight. So um, you can also do the sponge blocks. This is just a, um, a wet foam. Don't use wet foam. I just happen to have a piece left over from a not storage thing. Um, somebody gave it to me because they were like, I don't know what to do with this. So I kind of played with it today. You can cut them in half. Just get the regular hard foam. That's the one you want to use for dried artificial florals. You only want to use the wet foam if you're using actual real florals. But if you were doing real florals, you would soak this in, get it soaking overnight, pick it up, and then you're going to stick it inside your bucket, and then you can go ahead and add your real florals to it. And then, um, obviously, with a real bucket, um, you can add a little bit of water to the bottom mm -hmm. to um, keep it so that it's ready to go. And maybe, yeah, you could definitely put um, a little thing of uh, pebbles or stones in the bottom. Oh, yeah. If you want to weigh it down, and then you could spray the gaps and cracks on Yeah, you could definitely do that at the very bottom. So these are just something fun that um, I will put in our house. Um, having two different ones is going to be super fun. And then because all the florals kind of stay in sync with the lancer swag slash table runner, and then I have that one back here, and then... This one's a little bit more of Americana. It's to show you that you can put together something simple to decorate your entire home um, for whatever holiday occasion you're having. So we're gonna go ahead and start with this one. I'm gonna put this one to the side, but I wanted to show you. All you have to do is cut it. This is a uh, three and a half by three um, foam block. You cut it, you would glue it and then stick it in there, mm -hmm. and then you're good to go. And the 10 pails are about five by five, you said, right? Yeah, they're five inches in diameter, and then five inches high. So they make for a cute little... Um, and you can find those at local craft stores or I would online. get. I think Dollar Tree has some cute, like, just get a metal bucket, and if you're into the whole chalk couture thing, you could chalk couture whatever you want or, on the side of the bucket. Or Mod Podge. Yeah, oh, yeah or Mod Podge. Um, some napkins do a mod podge uh whatever bucket we haven't done that yet for a while so um that's definitely something you can do to dress up your bucket but you're going to see that this looks super cute so obviously when you're designing your floral if you have a decorated bucket you don't want to have your greenery or your bows or anything else covering this um i you, what you'll see is that if i'm going to do that it's going to be off to the side so that i'm not blocking my design on this particular bucket otherwise what's the point in doing the decorated bucket so before we begin do you guys have any questions well, i are asking where you get the 10 pails from but <clears throat> this was from shinoda yeah they were six dollars for the bucket so i didn't even realize that they were two totally different buckets i just picked them both up so you could have a set you know like if you put them on your fireplace mantle um then if the greenery on the top does not cover everything on here. A couple things. You could put peat moss on it, that gets messy. 
you can spray this a different color and color it green so it'll mm -hmm. hide you don't see the the white gaps mm -hmm. and cracks but you can paint it uh, fortunately for us when we do the centerpiece the greenery that i have incorporated is going to cover this and keep in mind that like when you're using your florals you're going to incorporate that greenery so that that greenery helps to hide the, the center. So any questions before we start? Uh, Kat says she's used the gaps and cracks on a large tin container and the bottom warped. Really? And that was not flat when I sit on the floor. Do you know what causes this? The only thing I could think of is when you did it, hopefully it wasn't, um, you didn't seal it when you let it dry because when you seal it and that stuff expands, it will... It push will expand out. and push out the metal, yeah. Because so. we've done it in baskets, mm -hmm. and I've seen people show that when they've done it, it will actually push the bands of the baskets out, but we haven't done that. And I'm thinking because we don't fill it as full. We don't fill it as full, and we always have... You don't have, fill we, it to the sides, right? We, you yeah, allow right. it to expand out to the side. No, we, you can fill it. We fill it to the sides, but as long as it has a place to expand to, like the top... Mm -hmm. It has probably, to have some place to go. Right. So if you try to contain it, it's... It's gonna explode. Right. Okay. So, hi Kaylee. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead and get started. The florals that I got today, um, most of them came from Hobby Lobby. Some of them came from Shinoda. A couple of them came from Walmart, and then uh, Dollar Tree. So I'll go over those while we're using them. So the one thing that you want to do is I like to find. Uh, even artificial florals. I like to find artificial florals that resemble the exact same thing um, that nature provides. So I don't like to use a, like, um, let me show you, like Hobby Lobby has these blue roses. Um, unless they're artificially colored, there, there isn't any blue roses. Um, so I try to find flowers that in nature um, are, would be blue, like uh, carnations I think but then those are artificially colored as well but things like um, corn flowers blue bonnets there's blue baby's breath I'm trying to think blue is probably going to be the hardest um, there's dogwood um, I don't know if poppies come out in a blue color but I try to go with as close to you know what nature provides it so that it looks realistic. Um, the ones that I like at Hobby Lobby, I like the ones that have the little water droplets on it. It just looks cool for the effect. So, and then I generally will use the, the white and the red roses. I might pop blue in, but not on this particular one. So um, Hobby Lobby does sell these in bunches. Tomorrow is the last day for their bunches, meaning big, huge, piles of florals at 50% off and then the normal florals like single roses mm -hmm. will all be 50% off so you can still catch that deal. Okay, um, that being said, you got to figure out a focal point flower. For me, I'm going to do roses. So I'm going to do red roses as my focal point flower and then I'm going to come in with um, the daylilies and the corn flowers for my medium and then we're going to incorporate some lilac, which is kind of like a soft baby blue. We're doing blue baby's breath. Um, this is just a dollar store filler. We may or may not use that. Uh, Queen Anne's Lace is generally my filler of choice for the white. And then we're gonna add some greenery here and there to kind of fill everything. But you're gonna see how super simple it is. In the event that your gaps and cracks isn't hard or you're having trouble getting your picks through, you can get a wooden skewer or a metal mm -hmm. skewer to kind of help you put that through. Mm -hmm. I have my glue skillet on, so once I get my florals in there, I can go ahead and secure them so they won't move. Helen said, Kat, the other night you mentioned the craft store where you buy your nice flowers from, I think it's in Chicago. I think it's Sims Pottery, Sims right? Pottery. It's yeah. in um, Georgia, I believe. Yeah. Um, and they are also online. So I would say that almost anything that you look at there is a good quality um, floral. I don't think... Out of all the florals I've ordered from them, that would probably be my go-to source for online, that and Michael's. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the center. I kind of like it that it's not 100% perfect, that our, our petals are starting to flop, 
as we start to fill this, you'll see that it'll go a little smoother. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just dip this in my glue skillet so as I poke it through, it should go all the way in. Let's see if it does. There we go. And then we're going to put two off to the sides. I like to do my centerpieces so they can be viewed from all angles, not just one, like this would be the front and you can't look at it any other way. So I'm gonna put the other two off to the side. Mm -hmm. Hi Donna, hi Susan. Susan had said delphinium. Oh, delphinium, yes, and hydrangeas, yeah. right? Because they have little hydrangeas. Right. So I'm trying to keep them at a... You do a triangle? <laughs> it's not a triangle, no. Yeah. This one's just going to be a, a, a trio, and then we're going to supplement it with everything else. So there we go. There is my trio. So now I'm going to come in. What? Nothing. What were you thinking? Nothing. Okay. Now I'm going to come in with my cornflowers. I only have two. So I'm going to take these and put one in the front and one in the back. So I'm going to do one here about midway down, just like that. And you always wanna push your granary up to the top, if you can. If not, you might have to make your own granary like you guys have seen me do before. Let me push this out of the way. Yeah, Pertina says Sims have great florals. They That's really good. do. If you guys live in the area and are able, I, I don't know, can you go into Sims? Some online places or some wholesalers you can't. I'm looking for ones with three. Like this daylily actually has the three. So I'm going to take these and bring these in between my roses. So I'm gonna do four different ones. Just like that. Here's another three. So we'll go over here. You'll see how quick this goes. And don't be afraid, because sometimes you'll look at it and you'll be like, hmm, kind of not liking how it goes. Just go with it, finish it, see what happens by the time you get done. And if you're doing star foam, you don't have to um, glue everything in. Like you can start it with a dry star foam and then if you like it, great. Then you can come back in with your glue gun, go around the base and glue everything in. Um, I'm going to try to find another trio in here. Well, uh, Wilhelmine says yes, you can go in the Sims. You can? Yeah. Oh, you guys are so lucky. Yeah. But I guess that's what people say about <laughs> us in... Um, she says I also have one in New York. Or, sorry, North Carolina. Nice. Okay, so I'm looking for the ones with three. There's ones with two, and there's ones with three. These, by the way, came from Hobby Lobby. This is another one of those bush things. So these are ones that I always keep in my inventory. These oh. white, what? You can actually tell them. What? Our Hobby Lobby is. Oh, I know, they know. Yeah, Our Hobby Lobby's open. Oh. I've been posting what's on sale now. <laughs> yeah, we have to wait outside in a line, but it's open. And we'll bend all these down a little bit later. So my goal is in between the roses. And we'll do one more on the other side. So I'm gonna find another trio. It's nice being back in Hobby Lobby. Ours does not have fall on sale yet. We still have 80% off of spring and Easter, and they have all their patriotic <coughs> stuff out right now. Yes, yeah, Stormy said, I went to Sims in February, North Carolina, great place and great people. Um, Sandra says I love doing centerpieces and like Christina says you can go in there but be prepared to spend the day. Yeah, I'm sure it's <laughs> like ours, right? Yeah. You're in there for the whole day. Okay, so this is it so far. So as you can see I'm just kind of like mixing and matching my florals. So now I'm going to come in with, um, I'm trying to think what I, I'm going to come in with some blue baby's breath. Let me pick some of these apart. I need the stems to be somewhat long. So these are just gonna kinda go in as fillers at the bottom of the lilies. Hi Alicia, this is hey you guys, I always miss your Friday Night Lives, but get to watch you, uh, get to watch later, beautiful work always. 
Thank you. Thank you. Um, these blue baby's breaths came from Shinoda. I had to think about it. I'm like, where did we just go recently? So I'm just adding these for filler. So as I'm adding them, I'll flip them around so you can see what I did. I'm trying to decide, do I want it quite that big? I think I'll take it down a little bit. Centerpieces are fine because you can just poke and design and go. Exactly. Yeah, Center says he loves doing centerpieces. They're so nice. much fun. And you could do these for the little, what are they, um, the funeral, like their oh, the like little, cups. Can, little cups. Yeah. yeah, you can do them for this as well. Um, those will all work. I'm gonna go ahead and chop this one down. We'll Sharon this. Burkhart. So Josh, you guys have all those stores. In Ontario, Canada, we have Michaels and dollar stores, and that's it. I know. But you guys can't purchase from online, but it is more expensive. I yes, think. everything has to be shipped. Yeah. So as you can tell, I'm trying to keep my height. Like I don't want anything extending beyond the height of like the center rows. Yeah, about 12 inches probably. Right. Um, now I'm gonna come in, let's see, with some of, it's a pig that looks like this that I got from Hobby Lobby. So it's just got Heather and I guess it's supposed to be like some sort of lilac, but it's not really. Um, but I broke it all apart just so I can have these little fun picks with fun pieces on them. So I'm gonna add these down around towards the base just to add some pops of that like bluish purple. I thought I moved it. Maybe I moved it back. Move this over just a touch. Kind of not having to drag everything over. Um, there's another one of these. So it's just nice for visuals to have different heights. And then if you want to bend some of your florals forward so they don't kind of don't get mushed into the center, you can definitely do that. And like I said, even at the end, you can go around with peat moss if you wanted to and just Yeah, I didn't around. need to. By the time I finished, yeah. and you'll see, you can't see the bottom. So I'm just kind of going around and adding just different heights, different textures, some little sprigs of greenery that came out of that pick. I don't even know if this will go in all the way. Probably not. It needs a bigger push like this one. There we go. So I keep trying to pull all the glue threads off. Still haven't discovered how not to do this without putting that on my cutting mat. So let me go ahead and add a couple more. Have these all cut. There we go. We'll add a couple more of these. Hi Angie, she said, oh, hey, I'm finally catching a live. Welcome, thank you for joining us. Take this one. I'll add this right here. Sometimes you can just look and go, it kind of needs white here, it needs some red here. So as you can see, it's slowly starting to take shape. Um, mm. I'm gonna go ahead and start adding in some of my greenery to the bottom. And what I've done is that one giant pick that we used while we were doing the bike frame for the greenery, I have cut all the, the picks out that I need. Um, so I have these little ferns that are all wired. So I kind of arc them in the direction I want. So again, you wanna make sure you're not covering your bucket design. And we're gonna start adding some greenery around there. Olga said earlier, she says, wow, she used to live in Santa Ana, but now she lives in Texas. 
Uh, that Shinoda's been there for decades, though, right? I don't. I think it's been there a long time. I don't know how long it's been there. I grew up in Santa Ana, so literally, I lived right down the street from where that Shinoda is. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's always been there. Um, it's always been a warehouse of some sorts. Yeah. Okay, and then Carol Thornton asks, do you mix silks with plastics? It's sometimes hard to find green stem fillers in silk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever looks good. Like here, I think these are all, some are. Yeah, I guess in this sense of the word, we kind of are blending in silks and plastics because we're adding the granary, which obviously is all plastic. Right. So I'm just taking all the pieces that I had before, really trying to get rid of the glue threads. And I'm just adding them so they kind of go up and over the side of my bucket. Um, I'm going to add some fern. So all this stuff pokes right into that gaps and cracks. It's like, it's almost like working with wet foam in the consistency that it's easy to poke through. Let's put some fern over here. Just don't wanna saturate it, like get my leaves stuck in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, getting started with your Queen, what? Queen Anne's lace? Not yet, no. Yeah. I'm just adding the greenery to the bottom. Because then by then, when you start to do that, the, mm -hmm. the greenery is so full, you won't be able to poke these in. So I'm just kind of going around the outside. Still taking all my glue threads. This is why it's so nice to have a glue skillet because you just throw everything back in there. It's the new cleanup thing. And I'll add some more over here. Pull this one off. And you can see she's got a patriotic theme going on today. Do I? <laughs> kind of, right? Um, okay, I have a couple of these little sprig pieces, so I'm gonna tuck these in. Let's see, here's the other one. Bring this over here. I like to take some of the daylily leaves and just kind of, if I can, just bend them down so they're not sticking straight up. Um, we'll hang on to these. I'm gonna take some small red roses because obviously the only red right here is just that trio. So I'm going to take these and snip them down. I'm going to start putting these towards the side and you'll see. Just like that. And I'm bending them so that they kind of have a slight arc. So when I put them in, they're kind of leaning forward. Another one. Okay, pulling all these off because I hate the threads. Now, let me, this was something I hadn't done earlier, but I wanted to do. Let me grab these, some baby white roses. I'm gonna put those towards the bottom as well. And yes, Steve, I will come in with Queen Anne's lace too. I know you're like, you don't have room. Oh yeah, yeah I know. Keep spinning it 
all you have Cynthia to do. Cynthia is so beautiful. Um, and these ones are from Michael's. So these are Michael's mini roses. So always push your granary up. Turning to the side, and do another third, another. I like to use them so I don't have to put away just half a pick. Okay, threads, threads, threads. We're slowly getting there. Um, Queen Anne's Lace. Didn't I have one out? Right here. Okay. So these are my perfect filler flower. Someone told me these are actual weeds somewhere. So, um, kind of looking at where I want to put them. Right here. Yeah, there's another spot on this side too. Yeah, it's just a matter of making sure I can hit the center. Right here is where you're thinking? Yeah. Okay, we're almost done. All the grain here gets pushed up. I always grab the one with the price tag. <laughs> um, the Queen Anne's Lace are at Hobby Lobby, so these are 50% off right now. They come in three different colors. Four. Pink, yellow, purple, and white. And these are always a great filler flower to have if you do grapevines. So as you can see, they fill nicely. Mm -hmm. And then I'll add one more over here. Everybody's got to get pushed not that far up. <laughs> not that far. Sit back. And back through here. Okay, now moving everything up. There we go. Last one. And then you can move your florals around as you need. But as you can see, it fills quite nicely. Um, Maybe one more. I'm like, it's either that or a red rose. Let me look. This. Because it has really nice greenery, really long leafy greens. Okay. And I'm just like, I go around the bottom and I look for any holes. Like, do I have any holes where there's no floral? No greenery. I'll take this and we'll move this down because now it should move down. There we go. Sometimes you just need other floral in the way to kind of help. Any other questions, gals? This is going to be a super quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I want to add some ribbon to the side to kind of tie these in. So, um, small bow. These are not going to be like Bodabra bows with any type of formula. It's just a super simple um, hand tied bow. And I did ones like this. So it had the red, white, and blue words on it with the red lame, which would go off to the side. 
that looks great. It also looks good if you take pops of blue and do the exact same thing. So I like the red. I think I'm gonna do the red with the, um, the stripe for this one. So, here's scissors. Let me open this. So we're just going to hand tie these and then turn them basically into a pick and add them to our bucket of flowers. And then, like I said, if you're doing craft fairs, these are nice little things that you can kind of have yeah. on the end of and your pieces. table. Yeah. They're easy for people to pick up and go. They're a pain to ship because you need them to stay in this manner. Um, to ship and that makes it a challenge because you want it to look like this when the customer gets it out of the box and we can't always be assured of what the carriers are going to do right. throw it on the side kick it to the door whatever but so, these are great to make for your home for decorations yeah and... or to give to a friend in the office or sometimes um, you have people and not that are, you're visiting in the hospital and you can't take fresh florals can't take the fake ones though, so make them a really pretty um, bucket of mm -hmm. artificial florals and then that way they can enjoy them. Bucket of love, right. Um, so what you want to do to determine the length of your bows is you're going to kind of eyeball it and mine's going to go to the, the rim of the bucket. So um, I'm going to go, this is probably five and a half inches at six. So six inches. And then my loop. So I'm just doing these as a hand tie. Twist it. I see how big my loops are. Three. Um, yeah, three inches. And then again with your tail. Hello, Meta. Just like this. Let me dovetail this. You can dovetail it afterwards, but I like to just do it all at the same time. Otherwise, I forget. So there's that. There's our bow. Now I need to do another one of these. So let me grab Put it away, thinking I wouldn't need it. So chip clip, just to hold that for a second when you need a spare hand. And then we'll do the red lame because it's super shiny. Um, both ribbons came from Craft Outlet. So we'll do the same thing. We'll make this one a little bit shorter. So maybe five. And then the same thing. Smaller loops. I do these like this for my Christmas tree. So I just hand tie bows exactly like this for a tree. And then you'd add your floral wire to it and then twist it on your tree. Um, so this one, I'm going to do here. You have to dovetail your other Yeah, I will. I just need to get them together. Grab a pipe cleaner. You could do it with floral wire, but I would say do thick floral wire because we're going to be taking this and making it a pick that's going to poke into that gaps and cracks filler. So now I can do this one. I think it needed blue ribbon just because we're doing that red, white, and blue theme. Mm -hmm. So now we can fluff our bows, pull all the tails down. when it goes into the bucket it looks really nice um, so what I do is I'll just twist this and get about oh, three inches or so sometimes like five sometimes I'll go until it's at the longest because then I'm making it thick mm -hmm. and then I'll cut this off just like this this down. 
like these we would have done for people in nursing homes. So, because I don't want to hide my design, I'm going to actually add this right, I'm gonna turn it down a little bit more, right to the side where my handles are. So right here, and then it'll be on the opposite side. So it's gonna go inside and then inside. So I just kind of create a little pick. I will add my glue to it. Kind of have to push your florals out of the way. Fluff my bow. And there's one side. So now we need to make another one. Just like that. Just a simple little bow. And that way it becomes something that they can enjoy from all sides. There's no real front and back. Mm -hmm. But it's good when you do it on the sides of the pail because then you can see the truck design. Yes, that's exactly why I put the greenery there. Mm -hmm. um, because I didn't want it to interfere with the design. I think this one, no, it just looks funny. It looks like one is way bigger as far as the bow goes than the other. Do this. We can dovetail. Hi, Donetta. Melody said so pretty. Val said cute little bow cat. Yeah, these, like I said, these are what we put on our trees, um, on our garland, just random branch placement throughout our Christmas tree. They're super simple to do. It helps sometimes tie the ribbon that you might use at the top of your Christmas tree to, um, as your bows cascade down, you hit those little ribbon points along the way. So we gotta make these ones smaller. Okay. Now we'll grab this one. dovetail this one, fluff it, stick it in the other side, and we're done. And just that quickly, you've made a floral centerpiece. So, and you can do this for any season, like we've done them for fall, we've done the apple crates for fall, um, what else do we do? The little baskets. Mm -hmm. They're just fun <clears throat> to experiment with. Right, Audrey? She says, I love the buckets because they're just the right size for small spaces. They are, like the end tables. Yep. Or like our mantle isn't, it's not super large, but the fact that it could go on either end mm -hmm. is perfect. Let's take it down this far. And then other side. Oh, thank you, Debbie. That was so nice. What's that? She said, Kat, I have followed you from your beginning as a wreath maker. I want to thank you for staying true to your teaching, your followers, and your faith. I have learned so much. You and Steve are great people, and all of your followers are too. Aw, thank you so much, Debbie. That was really nice. Hey, guys. It's all finished. Super simple. So, 
you guys saw how it went. Um, you could go out and pick any type of floral you want. This would look great even if you had people who were doing weddings and you just wanted to do something simple mm -hmm. as centerpieces. Um, one of the other things I took is like, you could get, pop those ones out, um, fun little picks like this. You could come in and add these. You know, there's ones with fireworks in them. You can add that just as like a little fun pop. Um, you can add them, take them out. It's entirely up to you. I like to keep mine just like this. Um, but you can do them with any florals. So just pick your focal point flowers, find things that are your fillers. A lot of times you don't even really need the greenery because so much of your florals like, um, the roses are gonna come with their own. These have their own. You could add these down towards the bottom, but I kind of liked the Queen Anne's lace, the little, the way they spread out size-wise. Um, mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. Donna Super said, now simple. I have to go shopping for flowers, ugh. <laughs> um, yeah, but if you go like these ones, the rose bundle, this thing, that I bought. And honestly, we get our flowers from everywhere we can find them. So like this, and I cut all the red roses off. This whole bundle was, let me think. This is nine, so what is that? 475? Yeah. So 475. And you could easily make two, three, even if you wanted yeah. to just use this. And then the same thing with the dailies, because they're all 50% off. And we found them at Walmart, Michaels, Joann's, yeah. online, Shinoda, anywhere you can find them where they're decent quality. Yep. Just look for things, I think, that have some leaf texture to it, like these ones. You can see how thick the leaves are. There's actually four sets right. um, on certain ones. So these are going to fill a lot of the space. So while it sits in there, it's got the leaf that's going to kind of fan out and help you hide everything. And I think the roses that I have here, these ones, these just came from Walmart. Like these roses are from Walmart. You can use those as well. Um, just snip and use what you need to um, and then you're good to go. But yeah, my go-tos are always going to be daylilies and then Queen Anne's Lace. So I always have those in my inventory because those are great fillers. Yeah. Um, one other thing, let me make sure. Okay, we did like to follow, share YouTubers. Uh, descriptions for all the links for everything are gonna be in the description box below, meaning um, if you wanna look at the stuff that I sell on my website or in my Etsy shop, those links will be below. Uh, private group. If you want to join my private group, it's $17 a month. We do a total of eight to nine tutorials per month. This is our last month that we're doing our business class. So we're finishing up June's business class and we've covered everything from the beginning, from how, how to pick out a business name, how to open a Facebook business page, your Etsy shop, your website, um, different free apps that you can use to help market your products once you um, figure it out. And then we also do additional tutorials so that we meet every Sunday and Monday. So if you're interested in joining, it's just like this. It's castcreationsandmore.com. Um, you can either sign up on the monthly or you can get two months free and pay for the year in advance. Both of those options are there on the website. Um, in addition, because you guys have requested it, Last weekend we went to Shinoda and I kid you not filled up two shopping carts filled with ribbon. So ribbon bundles are now available on my website only. So you can purchase anything from patriotic, traditional red, white, and blue. There's patriotic Americana, which is more of the beige and tan, burgundy, navy. There's pet ribbons, there's sports solid, solid. ribbon. Yeah, Litter. there's solids everything so bundles are available so if you guys want them that's where they are um wreath kits will probably be coming next week we sold out of the ones that i had um oh and on the bundles there is fall and christmas bundles already available because Shinoda had it so we bought it so we brought it to you guys to offer it to you 
So we have it. Our online ordering system is not disabled, so we can ship out FedEx the next business day. You generally have it within, depends on when you order, generally within a three, week. Yeah, three or four days, yeah. Yeah, usually it's a week. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, private group, I will see you guys on Sunday. And do you guys have any other questions I could answer for you? Diana, Diana just asked if you can make a summer flower arrangement soon. Summer flower? Yeah. You're just going to basically do it just like this. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we will be doing ones for summer. We will, um, the fall ones are already, I'll have to look and see if they're on YouTube. If I did it in the public group, they're already on YouTube. So I try not to replicate it like I don't do... Um, like I won't do a patriotic again, a centerpiece like this again, it will be something different. Um, same thing for any of the designs. But yeah. yeah that's it. All right, everyone. Well, I will talk to you later. Thanks for joining me and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.